how to prepare for exam. I was sharing with us how to prepare for exam. Now today, I want to share with us 10 most repeated topics in both NECO and WAEG chemistry examination. So let's go. Now in SS1, one of the topics that you must read and read very well is mixture and compound. Now when you read mixture, what are those things you need to you know, take note about mixture? You need to take notes of examples of mixtures that we have. Of course, the question might not ask you to define mixture, but examples of mixtures that we have, number one. Then how do we separate these mixtures? That's separation techniques. The method of separation. Why can Neko do us um, questions on uh, the physical properties that ensures the separation techniques that we are using? Let me give you an instance. If you are using um, simple distillation as a separation technique to separate a mixture, most especially maybe ethanol and water. Now, why do you use or why do we use a uh, simple distillation to separate the mixture of uh, ethanol and water? Now, and that is the physical property that the question is asking from you. The physical properties that that question is asking from you is wide boiling point wide boiling point so when we talk about fractional distillation that one is close boiling point so i've mentioned two topics now separation techniques all the separation techniques that we have and then mixture why is here classified as mixture one it doesn't have chemical formula two its components can be separated by a physical which is called fractional distillation another topic in SS1 that you must master very well is gas loss gas loss all these boys laws Charles laws Avogadro's law Graham's law you must be able to state those laws correctly number one the number two is that uh, the mathematical uh, application or the mathematical expression of this law you must ensure that you master them very well do you get that now? Now, that is another topic that you must master for your SS1. Now, I have mentioned three now. Four, stoichiometry. This stoichiometry is a little bit, um, you know, voluminous and it's very interesting. What are those things that you need to learn in stoichiometry? Number one, how to balance chemical equations. Set to that. Learn how to balance chemical equation. After that, on that stoichiometry, that's when we have more concepts. How uh, you know this more concept, you can define it in with different parameters. You can define more in concept of mass. You can define more in concept of volume. More concept. How to calculate more with chemical equation. How to calculate more with formula. Like the formula for calculating, we have so many formulas for calculating more. One of the formula for calculating more is a. Uh, Mo is equal to mass over molar mass. That's one formula. And then you can actually use it, um, you can solve more with a uh, chemical equation. Learn more. Learn more concepts. Learn stoichiometry, balancing of chemical equation. Those are the topics that, that are very common in SS1. SS2 topics that you must master very well. Number one on the list is periodic table. Why do you see periodic table? Now, Why under that periodic table, chemistry objective. A lot of the talk about the is my name. Question number 29. Uh, you learn the electronic configuration more than of periodic neon that was wrongly stated as 1s3, 2s2, 2p5. The wrong electronic configuration violates option A, Ohm's rule only. What does Ohm's rule state? It states that in a degenerate orbital, Electron occupy singly. Electron occupy a degenerate orbital singly before pairing takes place. So he's talking about a degenerate orbital. And what are degenerate orbital? We have P orbital. We have three suborbital. We have D orbital, which has a five suborbital. We have F orbital, which have how many suborbitals? Seven. All these ones are degenerate orbital. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these ones are degenerate orbital. So right now, it doesn't violate uh, because this is a degenerate orbital. It is until we draw the P orbital before we can know whether it violates it. So since we are not drawing this, this option A is not correct. Option B, about principle only. What does about principle state? It says that electron enter into the orbital in order of increasing energy level. And that is why we have one S before two S. So this is an increasing order of their energy level. So it doesn't violate this uh, principle too. Abba principle. It doesn't violate it. Poly exclusion principle. What does poly exclusion principle state? It states that an orbital can only accommodate maximum of two electrons. One in off spin and the second one in down spin. So this is an orbital. And the orbital can accommodate maximum of two electrons. So one in the upper spin, the second in the lower spin. Electrolysis. This electrolysis is very, very important. You must ensure you read this topic very well. And what are those you need to read in electrolysis? Number one, definition of electrolysis. Another thing you need to study about electrolysis is um, uh, electrochemical series, that is, arrangement of elements according to their reactivities or according to their uh, power, I mean, electropositivity and then electronegativity. Another thing you need to study under this electrolysis is a um, uh, Faraday law of electrolysis. Then we have first Faraday and then the second Faraday. Then the applications of both uh, the first law and the second law. Most especially how to write um, ionic equation for every element being discharged at the cathode. There's something called cryo. See how a hole. I repeat, cryo, C R A O. That C represents cathode. At the cathode is reduction. That A O represents anode and oxidation. So at the anode is oxidation. At the cathode is reduction. Do you get it now? At the cathode it is reduction. At the anode it is oxidation. So you need to know, you need to learn how to you know, write uh, ionic equation for both the cathode and the anode of the electrolysis. Uh, I'm still going to release video on uh, how to calculate, I mean, applications of Faraday law of electrolysis. Watch out for that one. Applications of Faraday's law of electrolysis because we are going to come across questions that involves the applications of the uh, Faraday law of uh, electrolysis. Okay, now the one that is very close to that electrolysis is redox reaction. Redox reaction. You must read redox reaction, my, my dear student. Read redox reaction, and this redox reaction is very simple. Most, uh, most especially the aspect of definitions of oxidation and reduction in terms of electron transfer. Definitions of oxidizing and redu uh, oxidizing agent and reducing agent in terms of electron transfer. Take for instance, oxidizing agents are electron acceptor. Oxidizing agents are what? They are electron acceptor. Why? Reducing agents are electron donor. It means that any oxidizing agent you are going to be adding electron at the reactant side. Any reducing agent you are going to be adding uh, electron at the product side. Oxidizing agent as electron acceptor and then reducing agent as electron donor. Then how to write and balance redox reaction? It is very very important. How to write? You might not even need how to write, but make sure you master how to balance a redox reaction. Do you get that now? Then the next one is a chemical equilibrium. <laughs> and this topic are not hard. -o. Chemical equilibrium. You just have to apply your art, you need to apply your intelligence, you need to relate it with things that are physical. Hmm? Chemical equilibrium. And most importantly, most importantly, on this chemical equilibrium, 
factors that affect a system in equilibrium. And don't forget the Chatelier's principle. We state that when a system is in equilibrium, and one of the factors that affect the position of equilibrium is altered. What are those uh, factors that can affect the position of equilibrium, like change in concentration, like change in temperature? If any of those factors is altered, it makes the equilibrium to shift. Eh? Make the world to shift in order to neutralize the effect. It's like if somebody is sitting properly and you are okay, you are sitting properly, and then something just happened all of a sudden that um, maybe something happened to that seat, and then the seat tried to shake. What happened to you? You too, you are going to shake alongside. That is what Le Chatelias is saying. That by the time you were sitting very well on the seat, you are at equilibrium. But mainly something happened. You quickly shift so that uh, or you shake so that uh, you get balance. And that's what Le Chatelier is trying to explain. But this time around, it is in chemical system. It's a chemical system. So factors affecting a system in, in, uh, in equilibrium, like change in temperature, change in concentration, change in pressure. Do you get this now? Actually, pressure only affects a, a gaseous system. Pressure will affect a gaseous system. Pressure will not affect systems that are, that are solid. It will only affect a system that contains uh, maybe a uh, gaseous particle, gaseous element. Do you get that now? Then the next one is solubility.